When, as a young Christian, I read chapter seventy, verse one, I realized that I was not perfect. I lack kindness, humility, patience, love, and many other virtues and attributes. Therefore, in my prayer, I made the decision that, with the help of the Lord, I would have love, patience, humility, kindness, and the other virtues that I lack. But I must tell you that I never succeeded. Whenever I read chapter seventeen, verse one, I could not understand what it means to be perfect. Eventually, I saw that the perfecting factor in our life is God Himself, and that I needed to have God added into me. The most that we have is four fingers. We do not have the thumb. Regardless of how much we might train our four fingers to do things, they will still be imperfect because they are without the thumb. We need the thumb to be added to our hand to make it perfect. The changing of name. Now we come to the changing of name. In chapter seventeen, verse five, God said to Abraham, "Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee." Abram means an exalted father, and Abraham means the father of a great multitude. Although Abraham was a high father, he was not the father of a multitude, the father of many nations. But in chapter seventeen, verse five, his name was changed from exalted father to the father of a multitude. In Hebrew, the name Abram is composed of just four letters, represented by the English letters A B R M. The name Abraham is composed with one additional letter H. This indicates four plus one. Four is the number of the creature, and one is the number of the creator. Hence, as four fingers plus one thumb makes a complete hand, so man plus God equals perfection. Four plus one equals five. The number of responsibility, regardless of how good we may be as the number four, we are still short of the number one. In order to the to be the number five, bearing the responsibility to fulfill God's eternal purpose, God must be added to us. What was the significance of the changing of Abraham's name? It was that God was added into him. Before Genesis chapter seventeen, Abraham was just Abram, a man who did not have God added to him. But in Genesis chapter seventeen, the man, and not only his name, was changed by having God added into him. One unique letter was added to the four letters, and God was added into man. God is the perfecting factor. Without him, we are imperfect. We all need God to be added into us. This is perfection. As the person is the reality of one's name, so the changing of Abraham's name signifies the changing of his person. His original name indicated that he was an exalted father. Now God changed his name to indicate that he would be the father of a great multitude. <laughs> What is needed to fulfill God's eternal purpose is not an exalted father, but a father of a great multitude, not an exalted individual, but a multiplied person, a person with a great multitude as his multiplication. God needed a great multitude of people to fulfill His purpose, and for this He needed to produce a producing father. Most Christians desire to be a person with exalted spirituality. The more they seek this kind of spirituality, the more they become barren and individualistic, producing no seed. But God needs us to be multiplied in producing seed, not exalted in seeking spirituality. For this, we need the changing of name, the changing of our person. The exalted father has to be changed to the father of a great multitude. The exalted spirituality seeking person has to be changed to the multitude producing person. This requires the termination of the spirituality seeking self. Even this kind of self has to be terminated so that we may be a multiplied person, not an exalted one, for the fulfilling of God's purpose. In chapter seventeen, verse fifteen, we see that Sarah's name was also changed, as God said unto Abraham. As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Sarai means my princess, and Sarah means princess. 
the word behind before princess indicates narrowness, but princess by itself indicates broadness. Sarah's name was changed to Sarah because in a broad way, not in a narrow way, she was to be a mother of many nations. In chapter seventeen, verse sixteen, God said, "And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations." Kings of people shall be of her. When God is added into us, we become wider and broader. Without God's being added into us, we are not only imperfect but also narrow. Although you may be a brother or sister, if you do not have God added into you, you are narrow brother or sister. If you are a husband who does not have God added into you, you are a narrow husband. If you are a wife who does not have God added into you, you are a narrow wife. What can widen us? Only God Himself. If you are going to be a broader person with a broader view and with a broader mind, heart, and spirit, you need God to enlarge you, regardless of who we are. As long as we do not have God added into us, we always say things such as "my interests." My profit, my future, my growth in life, my seeking of the Lord, my function in the church meetings. Unless God enlarges us, we shall not care for others. Our name, which is my princess, must be changed to princess. We say, "This is my day, my house, my time, my deeds, and my debt," because we are short of God. But once we have God added to us, we immediately become broadened. When we have God added into us, we shall not only become a father of a great multitude, but also a princess of many nations, for the fulfilling of God's eternal purpose. We all need such a change, a change which comes from God being added into us to broaden our narrow person. We all need to be changed from my princess to princess, transformed from our narrow concept of spirituality to a broader and general spirituality, that we may be no longer my princess but a mother of nations, caring for others and having the seed of for the fulfillment of God's purpose. This also requires the termination of our old and natural man, so that we may be transformed into a new person. Producing the seed, caring for many others, and enabling God's purpose to be fulfilled with a great multitude. For God's eternal purpose, we need to be the father of a great multitude and the mother of nations. We need to be transformed into a multiplied and multiplying person and into a broadened and general person. The covenant confirmed with circumcision. In order for us to have God added into us and to be broadened, we need to be circumcised. The covenant that God made with Abraham in Genesis fifteen was confirmed in Genesis seventeen with circumcision. There was no need for God to confirm it again, for He had confirmed it once already. But it had to be confirmed from Abraham's side. While God was faithful to His covenant, Abraham was not because he had used his natural strength to produce Ishmael. Since Abraham's use of his natural energy with Hagar to produce Ishmael was the cause of the trouble, God confirmed His covenant by having Abraham circumcised. In the New Testament. We can find out the significance of circumcision. The spiritual meaning of circumcision is to put off the flesh, to put off the self and the old man. Colossians chapter two was eleven to twelve says, "In whom also you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, in the putting off of the body of the flesh, in the circumcision of Christ, buried together with him in baptism." In whom also you were raised together through the faith of the operation of God, who raised him from among the dead. Circumcision is a matter of putting off the flesh. The old man is not a matter of dealing with sin. In a strict sense, circumcision has nothing to do with their dealing with sin. It is a matter of being crucified and buried with Christ. Circumcision means to terminate yourself. To terminate your flesh, Abraham exercised his flesh in Genesis sixteen, but here in Genesis seventeen, God wanted his flesh to be cut off. In Genesis sixteen, he had energized his natural strength, but in Genesis seventeen, 
his track had to be terminated. This is circumcision.